and welcome back to the water cooler, everyone. Well, this might come as a surprise, but the Biden administration is still struggling to contain the border crisis. Actually, struggling may be too generous of a word because that implies you're at least trying. But anyways, New Mexico Representative Yvette Harrell has voiced concerns that by October, which is also the end of the fiscal year, a population the size of New Mexico, New Mexico, an entire state, will have illegally crossed into the U.S. Just let that sink in. And now House Oversight Republicans are demanding that a hearing in New Mexico on the border crisis, on the border crisis be held. Um, joining me now to weigh in on this is founder of Patriot Academy, Rick Green. Thank you so much for being here, Rick. Hey, Anna, good to be with you. Rick, I mean, it seems, you know, almost out of sight, out of mind for anyone at this point who is, has no interest in containing the border crisis because any representative in a border state will tell you that this is for sure a crisis. You know, even Kirsten Cinema has pointed that out. Um, do you think that that's sort of the thought process that the Biden administration has, particularly Kamala? Yeah, you know, I love the the idea from this rep in, in New Mexico for exactly what you're saying. Out of sight, out of mind, she's saying, hey, let's go have a hearing on the border. Let's let's have a field hearing where we get close enough to the border that we force these people at the federal level that we would ask to come testify, including Fauci, um, to have to actually witness what's taking place and see just how bad it is. Because I think you're right. And for them in Washington, D.C. right now, it's out of sight, out of mind, um, the, the, the hypocrisy of of uh, blaming unvaccinated people on COVID spread in Florida and Texas and New Mexico and places like that, while they continue to let 200,000 or more people a month come across the border uh, and then fly them into other areas of the country, even knowing that they have COVID, uh, only out of sight, out of mind, uh, could explain how they could make such ridiculous decisions. So I love this idea out of New Mexico. And, you know, we've talked about it before, states having to step up and do the federal government's job so Texas has been saying it was going to do that, and it's kind of starting to do that. But now New Mexico as well. That's a good sign. Yeah, to your point, it does seem that it's better to assume at this point that the federal government's not going to get involved. Um, but, you know, yeah. on a constitutional level, should we have ever expected them to get involved just historically? Or should this have been always the responsibility of the states? It should have been the federal government, honestly. That is part of their constitutional responsibility. Um, you know, they, they've ignored it. We, we saw Trump make tremendous progress on this with very basic policies, the return to Mexico policy, um, and other things that really weren't that difficult to do. They, they were even more effective than building the wall itself. So the federal government could handle this if they would just do so. Once Biden was elected, he made it very clear that he was going to open the border, uh, that, that it was going to be, you know, no action almost at all. And uh, so the states are having to step up. It's not a constitutional duty of the states, but at some point they can constitutionally step in. If it is an invasion, if it's an emergency situation and the federal government's refusing to do so, then the states can step up. You just have to have political leaders with the political will to do so. Now, Governor Abbott in Texas has, has talked a good game on this. You know, I've accused him of being all hat, no cattle on this because he could have done it for the last seven years while he was governor. He could have done it back in January as soon as he knew what the Biden administration was going to do. He didn't finally say he was going to do anything until he had some really hard opposition in the Republican primary from Alan West and Don Huffines, who were talking a much tougher game. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there are, have been some steps taken. And so, you know, I'll give the governor a little bit of a benefit of the doubt here that, that maybe finally we'll actually do something about it in Texas. But I tell you, New Mexico, having members of the New Mexico legislature step up as well, I wasn't expecting that. So that's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I certainly wasn't expecting it either. I would have expected it from Texas first, but we'll see yeah. what happens there. Um, but going forward, there are there is talk of Kamala Harris possibly being removed from her position as border czar. In fact, it does have some bipartisan support. Do you think that's something that will realistically happen? I mean, at some point, doesn't the Biden administration have to look at this and say, you know, we got to do something about it. And obviously this isn't working. I can't imagine why they would even be talking about removing her. I mean, she's been so effective and so involved. <laughs> no, wait, sorry, wrong person. No, are you kidding? She's made one drive-by, right, in El Paso at a detention center there. She's done absolutely nothing. So, yeah, I would hope that Democrats are embarrassed uh, by what an abysmal failure she's been as their, as their czar for the border and, and eventually that they would remove her. And you know all the internal politics that tends to take place even within a particular party. So even among Democrats, I'm sure they're already jockeying for 2024. Uh, and so there's some within the Democrat Party that would like to embarrass her by removing her. Um, they realize she's very unpopular, that most Americans do not have confidence in her, not only to do this job, but certainly to do any other job associated with the presidency. So they may start looking for a way to throw her under the bus. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost laughable to think that she's the person for the entire federal government that's supposed to be in charge of this. 
and we've seen her down here once and not even in the in the difficult areas. She came by El Paso and that was it. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm kind of enjoying the internal squabbling that's beginning to take place within the White House. Yeah. Uh, well, I do want to switch topics here over to critical race theory news. Um, the yeah. Senate passed a Cotton's amendment to ban federal uh, tax dollars from funding critical race theory in schools. Uh, the Senate passed this amendment. And basically, I just want to, you know, ask, you know, this sounds pretty promising, but do you think it's actually going to help curb schools' abilities to teach CRT? I mean, obviously, local districts can do whatever they want, it seems like. What do you think will happen? No, and I think I think your gut instinct is right. It is promising. I mean, first of all, uh, congrats to Tom Cotton for, for winning that battle on the floor. Thank you, Joe Manchin, for being the one Democrat uh, to vote with us and, and, and say, look, you, you know, if you continue to teach American children to hate America, that's going to have bad results long term for the country. Uh, CRT is divisive. It's 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 evil. Honestly, it teaches them not only to hate their country, but to hate each other, to hate themselves. Um, and and they have figured out, I think, some of them, maybe that's what, why Joe Manchin voted with, with Cotton and the Republicans, how unpopular this is. There's such a small percentage of Americans that actually like this, this divisive um, you know, philosophy, philosophy that's being taught in our schools, whereas about 70% of Americans are saying, what in the world are you doing? Stop this. I mean, look at all the parents that are coming out and testifying school board after school board. I love watching these videos of parents letting these school boards have it. I mean, just giving it to them. And then there are tons of candidates now, parents that are running for school board to stop CRT at the local level. But I do think doing this at the federal level is a good, good sign, a good thing, because it's tied to funding. You know, look, there's about I think it's roughly seven or eight percent of, of local funding that comes from the feds, whereas a ton of the strings uh, and, and, and regulations come from the feds. So this will get the attention of some of those local school districts. I hope, Anna, that they do this at the state level even more so. Several states have done it, but we need that to continue to be. Uh, literally a wave across the country to say no to critical race theory, no to this anti-American poison. Yeah, I only have 30 seconds left, but that was going to be my next question um, related to that. Do you think that more Democrats, particularly governors, will step up and maybe, you know, stop this within their own states, you know, following, you know, DeSantis's move in, in Florida? Yeah, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, most of these politicians, it's finger to the wind, whatever's popular at the time. And for the last year, Black Lives Matters was popular and that's why they supported things like CRT, but that has shifted dramatically. And as the American people say no to CRT, more and more of these politicians will actually listen to the, to, to the people, I think, and we'll see more states say no. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, it sounds like BLM at this point is now being exposed to what they really are, not exactly that's caring right. about black people. Um, but anyways, thank right. you so much, Rick. I really appreciate you being here. You bet, thanks, Anna, appreciate it.